What's up, awesome YouTubers? Ryan1988 or Justin back here to do a video for you guys. And today, I'm finally here to talk about that movie right there. Halloween, the 2018 film uh, directed by David Gordon Green and starring the one and only Jamie Lee Curtis back in her famous role, which is Laurie Strode. Now, this is a movie that takes place 40 years after the events of the original film, 1978 and erases anything that came after the original film. So all the other sequels up until this point are all erased. None of those stories exist. The brother-sister storyline that we all pretty much grew up with, at least for me, I wasn't born, you know, in 1978, so I didn't, you know, see the movie for the first time. So I always knew it as the brother-sister storyline. But anyway, that's erased, and this is, again, a direct sequel to that original movie. Um, and, uh, like I said, picks up 40 years later, and Laurie Strode is still living in Haddonfield, um, but she's pretty much isolated herself from everybody, except for her family and some other people that you see throughout the movie. Um, she lives out in the woods, um, pretty much alone, and, uh, you know, she's dealing with the trauma of the events that took place 40 years before. You know, that night on Halloween in 1978 really took a toll on her. And she's having a problem with it, and she can't get over it. And even her daughter, played by Judy Greer, Karen Strode, is telling her, you need to move on, and she really can't. Um, but she's also preparing herself for the time that Michael eventually breaks out, because she is going to kill him and finish him off. So, that is pretty much a short plot synopsis of the movie. Now let's get into my thoughts, because I've seen this movie twice, and... I saw it Friday night when it opened, and then I saw it Sunday um, on the same weekend it opened, just to kind of see it again, see if I have a different opinion on it. And the first time I had to soak everything in, I had to, you know, think about everything that I saw in the movie, and then I wanted to go back and watch it and again, again and see if I have had a different opinion on the movie. Um, and I'm going to see it again a third time just because... I'm going to see it with a buddy of mine uh, the day before Halloween, and I'll watch it again and see if I have another opinion, because I think this is a film, before I get into my pros and cons, I think this is a movie that over time, even though I probably won't love this movie, I definitely think I'll appreciate it more and more, and it might even surprise me, and I might say, you know, in the future that I love it. I don't think that's going to happen, because I have more cons than I have pros, but, you know, my initial thoughts when I first walked out of the theater for the first time I saw it, I was really disappointed. Um, and I didn't hate the movie. I did enjoy it. I think it is a good movie. But everything that I wanted in the movie just disappointed me because it wasn't there. And if, if it tried to be there and say they were going in that direction, it quickly went away. Um, so let's talk about pros first. I want to talk about pros and then I want to quickly talk about cons and I'm not going to try to make this video long, but pros I had with this, the best thing is Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode. She is amazing as always. Um, I thought she was amazing in H2O and I loved her in the original movie and she is amazing in this. Um, she's able to balance the post-trauma and the, you know, tough, um, lead female in a movie really well. You know, she is ready to battle Michael, but she's also dealing with her problems of the events, again, that took place in 1978. And she really makes it believable because there were times when she was going through her struggles that you really felt for her. And I almost cried a couple of times. There was one moment in the movie where she has kind of a quick heart-to-heart -heart moment with her granddaughter, um, I, you know, Allison in the movie, and uh, that was really sad. Like, again, I almost cried. So, Jamie Lee Curtis, the best thing about this movie, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, she was awesome. Uh, some of the other things I loved, I loved John Carpenter came back, and again, he did the score. I bought the soundtrack tonight because I loved the soundtrack. I loved the score. Um, and that is a pro and con, and I'll talk about that real quick. Um, the pro for that is the music is amazing, and there's times where the music really works, 
and there's times when the music really doesn't work. Um, and I felt like, you know, there was moments where they used the music where I thought it could be um, completely silent and make the scene work that way, and I think it would have worked better. Um, but again, there was times where the music worked, and there was times where it didn't. Um, but overall, I was really pleased with the soundtrack. And again, I bought it. I love that soundtrack. I was listening to listening to it tonight when I was uh, heading home. Um, some other pros I had, I love the opening credits. I thought they were a great, or I thought the opening credits themselves, or itself, sorry, um, was a great homage to the original. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But they did a little twist with it, and I love that. And then the last big pro I had with this movie was the last 15 minutes of the film. I think those were the best moments. Um, do I like the, you know, last, you know, or the, the, the final climax of the movie? Um, not really, but the, overall the last 15 minutes when you're in Lori's house and they're, you know, her, her daughter, and her granddaughter are com confronting Michael Myers, I thought that was amazing. Um, and then another pro real quick, and I'm kind of going everywhere, but the last pro I had was Michael Myers. I, as always, um, I love Michael Myers. I, I grew up with this character. I grew up watching these movies and this franchise. So for me, I'm a big Michael Myers fan. So that was obviously a plus. Uh, going into the cons real quick, um, some of the tiny ones, and then I'm gonna talk about the big con I had with the movie. Um, one of the tiny ones I had is I felt like there were moments when the the film felt choppy and obviously you could tell watching the film just because they did delete some um, deleted footage and they changed the ending of course um, so you could tell especially with deleted scenes that the movie was chopped and they took things out of it and again they changed the alternate ending um, they redid all that um, which was another problem I had I, I felt like it just ended um, or they you know quickly ended the movie um, like, they didn't have a way to end the movie, so when they had to go back and reshoot the whole entire ending, they just ended it that way, and I wanted a little bit more from that. Um, so that was a problem I had with the movie. Um, and going into the writing of the film, um, a quick problem I had with the writing was they introduced a lot of new characters in the film, and I felt like a lot of them were underused, and they kind of came and went. You really didn't get to know them very well, and so they were, weren't really developed too much, and I felt like they needed to be developed a little bit more. And I wanted to get to know some of these new characters. Um, and they added a lot of characters and a lot of storylines throughout this movie that just felt underused. Um, and some of the storylines just didn't need to be needed. So, But I'm not, I'm going to go it's, you know, past that, and I'm going to talk about my major problem with this. And it has to be the humor, um, and a part of that is, uh, you know, when you're doing a Halloween movie, I don't want to laugh um, watching the film. Uh, there was a lot of really rough dialogue um, throughout certain scenes in the movie, and they tried to make it funny, and I was thrown off quite a bit. I didn't like it. Um, and, uh, you know again, with the humor of it. When you're trying to build a very suspenseful moment in a film, and they, there was moments in this where they were trying to build it, they would go to comedy, and they would go to humor. And it really took you away from that moment. Um, there's a certain moment, and we've all seen it in the trailer, where uh, this babysitter is tucking this little kid into bed, and the kid wants her to go check the closet, she checks the closet, and Michael Myers is there. After that point, they threw in some really terrible dialogue to try to make it funny, and the audience was cracking up. I turned around to the audience both times I saw this, and I'm thinking, this isn't supposed to be funny. Why are they throwing in this terrible dialogue? And of course they did. And this is co-written by Danny McBride, and when I found out that both David Gordon Green and Danny McBride were going to be attached to this, um, both directing and Danny McBride co-writing. I was skeptical, but I said, you know what, I'm going to go in open-minded because they did say this movie was not going to be funny. They weren't going to throw lines in there. 
they were going to make it legit scary. And again, when you're trying to build suspense, and then when I see that comedy, it just throws me off. And I, it takes me out of the movie a little bit. So that was a big problem I had. Um, and real quick, I do have to talk about it. And I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. But the twist that's in this movie did not need to be there. It made no sense whatsoever to be in this movie. Um, I think the writers probably thought it was cool and they thought that was going to be a good twist. But I think even people who enjoyed the movie like I did or people who loved the movie would probably say that twist just did not fit well. It made no sense to be in the movie at all. They tried to connect it um, somehow, but it really just threw off the entire film. And for like three minutes after they revealed that, I was taken out of the movie. I was like, what are they doing here? And I thought they were going to go in a different direction, but they did get back on track. Um, so that is going to be my review, guys, of Halloween 2018. I did enjoy the movie. I think people that I've talked to on Facebook think I hate this film. I don't. I enjoy it for what it is. But it needed to be so much better because, again, when I walked out of the theater, especially the first time, um, kind of going in hyped, I walked out disappointed. Um, and I think going in hyped probably, you know, had a problem with or um, was something that caused me to be disappointed because I was expecting a lot more from it. So I wanted this to be the best sequel, in my opinion, and it really wasn't. I would rank it somewhere lower on the list. I do have a ranking system, but I'm not going to go through it right now. It is lower on the list, and maybe one day, again, watching it again, uh, like I said, I've watched it twice and I still have the same feelings, but watching it in the future, and I am going to go see it on Halloween Eve with a friend of mine, I might enjoy it more. Um, but right now, that is going to be my review for Halloween 2018. I do recommend going and watching it. Uh, so support it like it's been supported because it is the highest grossing Halloween movie to date. That is awesome. So I am really happy with that. And I'm happy with the whole cast and the crew um, who made this movie happen. Because, you know, for me, even though I was disappointed, um, I never thought we were going to get another Halloween movie. I thought, you know, this series is dead now. We're never going to see another one. And they made it happen. So, anyway, guys, that's going to be my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you thought of it. And if you loved it, that's cool. For me, again, I enjoyed it. I didn't hate this movie. So, anyway, guys, you guys are awesome. You guys rock. In with the positive, out with the negative, And go eat some Skittles. All right, guys. Bye.